Hi, Matt Smitlick here for eLearning Instruction Support at Oakland University. Uh, today I'm going to show you Engage, a teaching, communication, and learning platform available on the Steam Marketplace. So, one of the first things you do in Engage is you're going to create an avatar for yourself. So, uh, profiles is what you'll want. So, I've already created an uh, avatar for myself. So, we're going to go ahead and go back to a lesson. So we could join an existing one. So all of this is online and multiplayer. Um, we can see that somebody, Air University, apparently has something going right now at the moment. So we're going to do some pre-recorded stuff, though, for the moment. And uh, first, we'll go over the controls. So one thing I really like about Engage is it's really versatile control system. So there's the standard VR teleport. And one thing I do like is it does draw the bounding box of your area, and then you are the circle in relation to where you are in the play area, right? So you can teleport around, uh, right? And that's, uh, that's one of the nice ways to uh, move around. But you can also do joystick movement where you're sliding and testing your stomach because this can get a little bit motion uh, sicknessy for people. Um, let's see, what else? You can also rotate, which is nice. So if your cable's behind you, you want to face a particular way, you don't have to be facing around. You can actually physically rotate yourself in the, in the space, which is really good for seated controller um, uh, setups. So the other thing I thought was really great is their varying menus, right? So you have a standard menu that shows up as a screen on a wall. Now, other users won't be able to see my menu uh, when I do it this way. So they won't know I'm in a menu. They'll just see me pointing at the air. But it gives you access to being able to load media, right, for being able to display it on the screen. Um, media can be a YouTube video, um, or it can be a publicly facing OneDrive or Dropbox link. So you can do a PowerPoint presentation, and you can uh, move between slides and all that kind of thing. Uh, let me see if I... There you go. I still have my one presentation there. So I'll take a moment to load. And up comes a presentation I did a while ago on some Arduino stuff. And you can move between the slides, right? Which I think is kind of neat. Gives you a preview of the slide here, right? Uh, which is good if you're not facing that direction. But in general, it's you know pretty standard uh, menu system here. But what I really think is interesting is they took multiple roads. So we have a tablet in the hand. Now, this does show up. Um, as viewable to other users inside the experience. So they can see that I'm, you know, doing stuff on the tablet. But it gives me the ability to step through the slides, right? You know, very nice. Um, other feature I think is very interesting in this would be the recording, right? So anything I say or do in here uh, can be recorded. And we'll, we'll do a quick recording. I'll uh, put myself here and uh, we'll title this. Test five, enter. We can record just yourself or the whole class. So if you don't want um, the audio of your students or the avatars of your students to show up, you can leave that unchecked. Um, I'll just check it for now for the heck of it. At some institutions, you may have to worry about your privacy policies, So especially if you're republishing the lecture. Um, so just something to keep in mind. So we are now recording, right? So anything I say will be recorded. Uh, anything I manifest, so if I pull up, let's say, virtual chicken, I don't know why, but we'll do a lecture on chickens, right? We'll place them all over the place. Uh, doo -doo -doo. What other stuff? We got bears. We have all kinds of uh, assets that are already, um, let's see, that are already part of simulation. Or right, part of the software, I should say. Not sure how many of these are default Unity assets and how many of them are specific to Engage, uh, but but yeah, you can manifest stuff and delete stuff, right? And so now we'll go back, stop the recording, save the recording, and we're going to load test five, play. Now recording, right? So anything I say will be recorded. Uh, anything I manifest, so if I pull up, let's say, virtual chicken, I don't know why, but yep, oh, there he is. Do a lecture on chickens, right? We'll place them all so one thing place. about when you're doing your own recording, you can actually pause it, which is weird that they don't pause the blinking. That's interesting. The animations don't actually stop. Um, 
But yeah, I can actually pause this recording. Uh, one shortcoming in the software right now, and this is uh, 0.4.6 alpha, I want to say, uh, is that you can't pause most lectures that you'll access via the lessons. So any of these lessons can't be paused. Uh, any of these recordings and interviews can't be paused at the moment. I'm really hoping they will fix that because some of these are more like a 30 minute interview. Um, and that's a long time to be standing, right? That's a long time to be sort of, um, you know, without any kind of distractions. I think one of the, uh, the advantages of doing online teaching via virtual reality would be the fact that you could take off your headset, put it down, and then pick it up a few hours later. So there is definitely room for improvement, but uh, it's interesting being able to see your own avatar. While I'm on the subject of uh, recordings inside Engage that are a little bit longer, one of the things that I think is the best feature of Engage, like definitely one of the coolest things, and they are the only piece of software I've seen that's really implemented this, I'm looking at you, Altspace VR and VR Chat, is a chair. You may have noticed this ghost chair uh, floating around by my feet, but this is always here in most of the experiences. For some reason, it's not in the main menu when you first load, which I feel like is a bug, um, but this ghost chair, is a real chair that I actually took the time to place before I got started. And so the advantage is I can actually sit down in VR, which seems like that would be a simple thing. But oh, apparently I did not pass for protect this session. <laughs> Hello, person from who's holding up a headset, it looks like. <laughs> so yeah, the chair feature is by far one of my favorites of the software. Um, but the neat thing is that when you use the teleport feature, you can sit in a specific chair. So now, that chair with the arrow on is the real world chair. So being able to actually sit in a specific spot, right, is uh, actually really nice, especially when it comes time to do one of the uh, longer form factor lessons. So one of the things I wanted to cover was the uh, content that's already in Engage. Now we're not gonna go over everything in this. Um, of note, I think the Neil deGrasse Tyson lecture highlights what a uh, sort of augmented reality virtual lecture could be like. You know, of all the amazing things about the universe, I think two stand above all the rest. One of them is that we know so much about the universe. But another is that there's even more that we don't know. Before then, and many of the well, nature's well, most unknown mysteries were thought to be the work of divinity. Take, for example, epilepsy. There's someone writhing on the ground, your best friend, frothing at the mouth. If, you have, if you're driven by Christian theology, your first thought is the person is possessed by the devil. That's the natural explanation you could go out to the woods going on there one morning, one damp, cool morning, and you'll find this circle of These were known as fairy mushrooms. circles. And people imagined sort of woodland, woodland nymphs, woodland fairies coming to have a jamboree. And these were their We would chairs. later learn that, of course, mushrooms are, are, they're not solo organic entities. They're, in fact. Uh, one of the things I think is really neat in Engage is its 360 video viewer. I'm going to pass her to protect this one. Just do one, two, three. Start. OK. So this 360 video player, I think, is very neat. And one neat feature of it is you can see the, the ghost chair showing up. Um, if I move a little bit ways away from it, it fades away, which I think is kind of neat. Um, but this podium has a bunch of pre-selected stuff. So there's uh, uh, elephants and some space station footage. Uh, I think these are just some popular picks from the YouTube uh, 360 channel. But um, I think it's very interesting to be able to go into 360 video and to be able to watch it with other people simultaneously. So things about 360 video, keep in mind if shooting your own content is uh, like this camera feels really tall, right? Like I, I feel like I'm nine, eight or nine feet tall at least. Um, and while you can skip around in the, the 360 videos, you can't skip forward or backwards in recordings currently. I think I mentioned that already. Um, but what we can do is we can bump forward just a little ways here. And so this is important. To, uh, oh, see, and this is one of the shortcomings of the software, I think, currently. When you pause the 360 video, it goes away. Now, to me, that should only happen when you stop it, because the first thing I want to be able to do 
is to be able to annotate, pause, and and talk about you know the elephant's tusks or what just pissed him off. Um, worth noting that when doing educational and VR content, um, he's imposing to me right now. So if your students have um, let's say fear of large animals, you should make considerations for that. Um, but yes, that that male I don't think likes the camera. But the footage is very good. Uh, this is streamed, um, so you will need a solid internet connection when viewing any kind of footage like this. 4K spherical video uh, likes the bandwidth. But yeah, the fact that you can do the 360 video with multiple people, and when you're playing the content, um, their avatar vanishes and just their little name tag above them would, would stick around. Um, so you can see where people are. But I think there's more work to be done in this section, but for right now, if you want to watch 360 video with another person, I don't believe you can currently do that in the YouTube app or any other 360 viewing um, uh, software I have seen, unless anything has changed on the Steam side of things, but I don't believe so. What we've seen is people consuming um, pre-recorded content, and there are some activities. The underlying framework of Engage, I believe, is Unity. So it's not too hard to generate your own Unity experiences as far as integrating with them with the environment. Uh, I can't speak to that personally yet. But there are the ability to do certain activities, right? So it can put the bones where they need to go, right? And so, so simple activities. Um, I would like to see in the relatively near future LMS integration so that a student could come do an activity uh, and then the score uh, or their completion status of the activity would come back to your LMS, whether it be Blackboard, Moodle, Canvas, whatever. Um, LMS integration is something I'm really, really hoping for uh, from this product in the not too distant future. Yeah, okay, so other activities, let's see. There's a physics lesson, and who doesn't love physics? Ballistic trajectory, lesson one. Now, like all good lessons, it's going to start off with an, uh, an avatar explaining what to do, the mathematics behind everything. And there's the chair. And uh, she'll start up right over there. Yep. Now we're going to use them right now. So I'm going to ignore her and just wander off. Every student would have a different canon that they'd be assigned. So there's you know five canons. So you could have five students doing this simultaneously. And here's a dry erase board that we can use to do our calculations on. So uh, 400, distance to target, 400. So for this simplified lesson, it's a terrible four. 432, OK. Uh, so let's do some math. Uh, 432 divided by 150. Firstly, all objects will fall so, towards the ground at the same rate, no matter how heavy two or how divided by they 150. Are. This might seem counterintuitive. 2.88. asked you to drop a rock and a feather from the top of a tall building, you would expect the rock to hit the ground first, okay. and of course you would be right. And so 2.88 times 2.88, that's T squared, equals, uh-huh. Where the rock has divide that by 2, to its mass and will fall equals, more rapidly. This was proved multiply by, by 9.8 equals 40. If we wanted to see this happen with a rock, so this should sink the ship if I did my math right. And evacuate all of the air from around us to see both objects falling at the same rate. Yep, that did it. So things I think are interesting is the fact that there's a built-in calculator. Uh, there is some clunkiness to the calculator at times, and the same thing with the drawing. My, my penmanship wasn't wonderful. Um, but in general, I feel like this actually works really well, and students can't see each other's boards, right? Um, but at a certain point, you will get a feel for the distances, and so once you've done maybe like five or six of these, you're going to be able to just guess the next number. So it's got some interesting aspects to it. So one of the last sections I wanted to show you guys in this um, is life. So a medical training simulation. This experience represents the ETAT plus guidance of single healthcare providers, birth without meconium, and does not represent the US European guidance. It's like we're on in a hospital. Um, I assume is the expecting father. Now there's multiple roles in this one. Uh, you can have a live trainer and a live observer. What I want to do is go in as the trainee. This baby has just been born and you were worried about his condition, what's the first thing you should do? 
Please proceed with the first step. Correct. Now Try and stimulate the baby to keep them warm. You need to assess the baby now. He is warm and dry. Watch for any breathing, movement, any or crying breathing, for movement, 10 seconds. Crying? No. Correct. There is no breathing, movement, or crying. To open the airway, the baby's head needs to be neutral. Use your controllers to tilt Position the baby's head. Correctly There's no debris the in face. the mouth. And the Good. The baby needs to be ventilated now. Select the best technique from the options in place you can see. and the other squeezing the bag. Try to keep the correct rate of 30 to 50 breaths per minute and watch the chest rise with each breath. If the chest doesn't rise, you haven't successfully given a breath. If I did this at the wrong rate, the baby would not live. You Yay! have ventilated the baby, and now it's time to reassess. That is a much better color. I was looking a little blue there, buddy. Yeah. Fantastic. You have successfully learned the steps involved in assessing and resuscitating a newborn who isn't breathing. Well done. So that's just some of the stuff you can do in any age uh, in the current alpha version of it. Um, I think one of the best parts about it is the fact that you and I can go in and record our own lectures uh, and currently submit them to get published back out to the rest of uh, the community so others could uh, view the content. Right now you can see a few interview shows that I think are worthwhile. Um, you'll have to sit down for a good 35, 40 minutes for most of them. Um, and like I said, there isn't a pause on it, but I think it's worth checking out. Uh, the content and the platform, I, I think rather than having a bunch of different people doing small educational projects, having a platform like Engage where they all get published on, I think is a much better way of going about it than everyone trying to be their own island. But for right now, uh, go ahead and download a copy of Engage. Go on and try some of the experiences yourself. Uh, and maybe even give a shot at recording some of your own content. Um, the Interviews that are available that people have recorded on on Engage uh, are kind of interesting. I really enjoyed the uh, uh, interview with a documentary filmmaker. Um, you do have to sit down for about thirty minutes, forty minutes to be able to actually watch it all the way through and try not to, you know, get distracted during it because you won't be able to pause it currently. Um, but I think it's really worth checking out. Um, and expect more content soon. And uh, I'm looking to make some of my own content and get it submitted in uh, into Engage in the very near future. Uh, if you are faculty at Oakley University, come check us out. We're going to help you uh, do the same thing. So, uh, there are also some, some interesting ones. I check out the five animals that aren't dinosaurs. Uh, they took a SciShow lecture and augmented that. It's very neat. Um, and there are a couple other experiences in there, the Mars Lander and that kind of thing, that I think are all valid, but we're just not going to have time to go over absolutely everything in, in the platform. Uh, but the big takeaway is that you can actually use this to record your own lecture right now and get that published back up. Uh, the recording does show up as a file in your My Documents folder, so you don't have to publish that, and you could just sort of take that file. I believe you could just take that one file and transfer it between computers if you didn't want to publish your lecture uh, or just make that available for download. So that's it for Engage. Uh, we'll be doing more in the series of virtual reality educational reviews. So up next is probably Immersive. Uh, after that, we'll probably do Google Earth and start going down the list of stuff available on Steam and an Oculus Store that really builds itself as being educational that we find um, it actually is. Because we're not going to do reviews of anything that is just Pac-Man with red blood cells. None of that arcade stuff. We're looking for real educational software here. So for now, bye-bye.